you are on to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insights and power. God bless you. Receiving God's presence. Amen. Amen. The secret of life is that people end the way they choose to end. The secret of life is that any how you see a person turn out is a function of his choice. Now, most times we live in denial. We live in um, a state of uh, assumption and we assume most of the times that the way our life eventually turns out is a function of luck, perhaps, is a function of uh, what someone does for us or what someone does not do for us. But I, ha- I have to let you know something this evening, that 100% of what it takes for you to succeed in life lies majorly in your hands. This evening, I will show you seven syndromes that holds people back from maximizing or reaching their fullest potential or reaching their fullest height in life. I want you to let you, I want to let you know something that the day God created you, everything that you need to succeed, he put inside of you. Everything that you require to become all that you can be, God packaged in you. Uh, let me give you this illustration. There were two vehicles that were traveling a certain day. They were on the road. And one was actually traveling at a pace that seemed like he was on speed. And while he was moving, excited about his brand new Mercedes car, green color, beautiful car, excited. He was the only one on the road and he was doing just pretty very well. Somewhere along the journey, another green Mercedes car, just like his car, overtook him. And he, he began to wonder, I, I thought I was driving fast. And this guy went in the distance. And So somehow, when he got to his destination, he met the guy who overtook him on the road. Same car, same color, same everything. Same year, same brand. And he asked him, how did you overtake me? We have the same car. I was driving very fast. What's the extra thing in your car that made your car overtake me? He said, no. There's no extra thing. He said, what is in my car is also in your car. He said, the reason why I overtook you is because I was driving as fast as I can. But you were driving as fast as you will. So there's a difference. You can be driving as fast as you will, expecting to get certain results, and the results are not showing, and you're wondering, why am I not getting it? The reason is because you have not yet asserted the needed pressure that you need to assert on yourself to maximize everything God put in you to perform at your maximum height. A car can have everything it takes to to move at a, at a pace faster than you can imagine. And it ends up doing lesser than it can do. Not because the car does not have inbuilt futures and inbuilt abilities to move at a very terrific speed or move at a very terrific height. The reason the car is not able to do as much as it could do is because it's operating as much as it wants to operate. So let me tell you something. That anybody is doing better than you in life is not because the person is better than you. The reason the person is doing better than you is that the person is maximizing his potentials. The person is putting pressure on the capacity God has put on the inside of him to fulfill and become all that God wants him to become. Now, the day this trip down on me, I began to take 100% responsibility for everything I'll become. My life is not dependent on anyone. My happiness, my peace, my success, my joy, my height, my greatness is not dependent on anyone. Everything it will take to succeed, God had put on the inside of me. So if you look at people ending up the way they end and you're wondering, why is this guy this way? Why is this girl this way? Don't think there's something extra now that is responsible for where they are. Everything that holds people back, 80% of it is within them. 
80% of the things holding people where they are. See, when you meet people complaining all the time, my father did not send me to school. That's why I'm this way. My mom did not give me money to start business. This and that and that and that. If you meet such people, you have met people who have decided to sign off their potentials. Sign off the capacity God puts on their inside to flimsy excuses. Such people hardly do well, no matter how you try to help them. So, part of what I want to show you this evening is that God has put everything you want, everything that you need, everything, everything you need to become all that you want to become is on your inside. But now, there are some syndromes that if you don't deal with, they will hold you back from reaching your highest capacity. They will hold you back from reaching your highest potential. Now, you think you have seen the best of you, you have not seen anything yet until you begin to maximize everything that God has put in you. Until you begin to put the needed pressure to see yourself perform above average. To see yourself perform above limitation. You will never know that there's more to you than currently meets the eyes. For instance, in the world of soccer, you see people like Messi and the rest of them like Ronaldo and Pabe. I was watching one of those, um, it, it was the last World Cup, the 2023 World Cup. Am I correct? Was it 2023 or 2022? 2022, right? Okay. The last World Cup. And I watched this fantastic young man from France called him Pabe. And then, most of the times when I watch this guy play, I, I say, is this guy a, is he a robot or something? He's a human being. Is he a robot? The speed at which this guy moves, the speed at which this guy runs. And Pabe has the ability to take a football and shoot it very far in the distance, and the ball is moving at a very alarming speed, and he can run and outrun the same ball. Such an amazing child. Now, you look at the the, the young man and think that this guy was built that way, to function that way. No, the capacity to be that kind of person is inside. But he had to train that capacity. He had to give that capacity the needed pressure that it requires so he can perform that way. Now, if Mpabe did nothing about becoming the kind of person he has become, he will remain redundant. He will remain like every other person. Meanwhile, inside of him is a footballer that can outrun even a football. But he can die and go to the grave without maximizing it. And that is why they said the richest spot in the world is not the petroleum field, it's not the gold mines, it's not the diamond mines, it's not anything else. The richest spot in the world is the graveyard. Because right inside there are resources that were never tapped. Right inside there were resources and treasures and gifts and abilities that were never maximized. People are operating below their fullest potential. It's one of the greatest tragedy in the world. One time we were doing a review on Celine Dion and we found out uh, a, 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 a review was done about her and then we found out that Celine Dion had the ability to sing on a pitch that couldn't be found on any keyboard. Like Celine Dion had trained herself to a point where if you hit on the seventh octave on any keyboard, hit the last note on the seventh octave, the biggest, longest keyboard so far, though there are, I think there could be some that are longer than, but the, the standard seven, the least standard five, then you have seven octaves. We're not doing music class here. I would have shown you a few things. But just understand what I'm saying. By the Spirit of God. Amen. (laughs) So you hit the last notes on the seventh octave. As high as it sounds. For instance, see what octaves are like. Now, if if I'm going to play on a key, let's say key F, and I want to play on the do chord or the do note. This is this is one octave. Second octave is the same key. But the octaves are increasing now. The pitch level is increasing. Now I want to play on the third octave. It's the same key. You, you notice the pitch is increasing. How many of you notice that? I want to play on the fourth. This is the fourth octave. Same key. Same door. This is the fifth octave. Do you notice that the pitch keeps increasing? So someone trained her voice to a point where she could sing above the octave on the keyboard. Like seven octave. What I played now is just five. I didn't reach seven. The seventh octave. She can sing above that pitch. And then they began to ask her, what is the thing? How did you get there? And she said, simple. I spent almost an entire day rehearsing. And I said, how many hours do you spend rehearsing? She said, 18 hours. So out of 24 hours, somebody gives him 18 hours to rehearse. That's why would she be good? Even better than the keyboard itself. Now, there are people who have defied every reason to fail in life. 
People who have defied all odds and limitations, they are doing more than you even expect them to do. Not because they are more gifted than you. The reason is because they pay attention to everything God has packaged inside of them and they are doing everything that is necessary to bring it to the highest point. Nobody is actually better than you. If people are better than you and doing better, it's because they give time to what they do. It's because they are paying attention to ensuring they don't die small. Nobody has ever cooked a good meal carelessly. To prepare a very nice meal, you must do something different from what the average is doing. Nobody has ever played in FIFA and worn golden boots without sleepless nights of painful training. Nobody has ever excelled and come out in life with flying colors in any field without paying some price that others will not pay. I was reviewing Dangote's recent refinery. They say it's the seventh largest refinery in the world and the, the largest refinery in Africa. See, when you see people doing things that break world record, when you see people doing things that defies average, don't think these men fell from the sky. These men pay setting price. Why you might be busy loving your Android phone, spending time on WhatsApp and Instagram, why you might be busy spending time on movies and all kinds of things. There are men who are busy spending time developing themselves without excuse. Hallelujah. Let me read for you Philippians quickly because I want to do very quickly and close. I need to show you these seven things very, very speedily and very quickly. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. This is Paul's writing. And let's look at what he said very importantly in this verse and passage of the scripture. Philippians chapter 3. Glory to God. From today, when I'm done teaching you, you will leave this place with a desire to be better. I didn't hear your amen. I didn't hear your amen. You see, I'm trying to help you reinvent yourselves. Is the biggest thing. Life is fun when you keep getting better. Like, there's nothing as beautiful as waking up in the morning and discovering that you're getting better at what you do, at whatever you do. Nothing as impressive, nothing as beautiful, nothing as fulfilling as getting up every day only to see that you are getting better. There is no limit in life. Every limit is self-imposed. Nobody has the ability to place limits on any man. Anybody who is functioning in limitation, in any sphere of life, in any area of life, is suffering from self-imposed limitation. Nobody has the capacity to impose any limitation on you. Anything you do, however you do it, is a function of how you choose to do it. This is the father you want to go. This is the extent you want to go. As long as you will never let this truth that I'm sharing with you now happen to you, you will still remain the same person you are. This is one of the miracles most of you need now. Not miracle of laying of hands and miracles of, uh, oh, I just got one miracle alert, as good as they are. That's For some of you, this is the miracle you need now. This revelation that is coming your way. Stop living your life to chance. You have to come to a point where even if there was there was no God and there was no hell, there was no heaven, there was no devil, you would still live your life and fulfill everything for which you are born. Hello? Do you know why many Christians are useless? They have left their life in the hands of God. <laughs> they have left their life in the hands of God. God, though, my life is in your hand. No. 
my life is in my hand. It's not in God's hand. The Bible says that death and life is in the power of the tongue. How come it's not in God's tongue? It's in your own tongue. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. Until you begin to dethrone some of this religious, ancient religious mindset that we may be adopted from age-long religious whatever, you know, configuration. Until we begin to throw those belief systems that we, we inherited, maybe from father and mother, inherited from uh, communities, from village. Until we begin to throw them away, our life will never make progress. Your life is not in God's hand. Show me one scripture that says your life is in God's hand. Search your whole Bible. You will never see one place where the Bible says that for your life is in God's hand. Hello, somebody. So a lot of people are becoming very useless on the earth, especially Christians, because they have left the things that should be an act of responsibility. If God wanted to take responsibility for everything that concerns you, he would not give you basic things like senses. He will not give you some basic things. You you will not give you a brain. He won't give you a, a mind. He won't, there are things he will not give you. Part of the reason God gave you a mind is so he can give him rest. I don't think you're hearing what I'm saying. There, there are too many Christians giving headache to heaven. Giving God headache. Because they do not realize that everything that they require to succeed, God already put inside. Let me explain something. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Very favorite scripture of mine before I get back to Philippians. The Bible said that, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And let them have what? Dominion. If you read all the way down to verse 28, the Bible said that, and God blessed them. And God said, be fruitful and multiply. Listen, the only thing God did was to make man in his image and likeness. Then God now put the empowerment. It's called a blessing. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful. What that means is bear fruits. Produce something. Then after you produce something, multiply it. That means your life is not supposed to be at a stand still. Your life is not supposed to be at a... The Bible says that the part of the just is like a shining light. It shines brighter and bright. Let me tell you something. Hear this. Anywhere you end, let me say it again. Anywhere you end in life, you place the ceiling, not the devil. Anywhere you end in life, you see, for instance, your finances, you see your marriage, your family, your home, your career, your business, your ministry, whatever it is. Anywhere you end, it's not God who placed the ceiling. God does not place ceiling on anybody. God does not say this is the height you will reach. When God calls you, you will determine your own height. God does not determine the extent to which you will rise. The responsibility for your rising is not in God's hand. All God has done is to give you enough equipment with which you would use to do what you want to do. With which you use to become who you want to become. God will never come down from heaven and take you to your place of promise. God will never come down from heaven and take you to your height. God will never come down from heaven and take you to your place of influence. He will never do that. It is your responsibility. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says something. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt continually meditate in it day and night, and thou shalt observe to do according to all that is written. He said, and thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. Nobody makes your way prosperous, only you will. I give an example. This evening I walked into church. This morning, something fell down. Our billboard fell down some, some, some time ago. Just fell down because of one of the very stubborn winds. I had the choice to say, okay, let it be there. I had the choice to say, okay, forget about it. Evacuate it. Take it away. We called some people yesterday, paid them huge amount of money to restore, you know, to put new things and then stand it. And the man told me, Pastor, this is why this thing fell down before. And he showed me a few things and all that. I said, okay, fine. I said, what do we do now to make sure it doesn't happen again? I said, do this and do this and do this. He said, this one I'm telling you is going to be much more costly, but just do it. And he gave me the second option. I looked at the two options. I said, I'm not going to go with your second option. I'll go with the first option. I said, this one is good. And it's even costlier than the first one we did. I said, let's do this one. God didn't come from heaven to choose for me. It's my choice. If a person settles for the best and now settles for less, it's their choice. 
It's not the devil. It's not God. It's their choice. So I said, okay, let's get it done. And then I paid. They started. And they were lifting, doing some things, arranging some things. And after a while, they said, okay, we're going to dig. They called diggers. They began to dig. And then they casted the thing. While they were casting, somewhere around past five or so, this evening, they called me and said, sir, the casting we did did not get to the top. The cement is finished. The stone is finished. The sand is finished. And I said, okay, so what's the plan? He said, um, tomorrow morning. I said, no, you have to finish the casting this evening so that by tomorrow they'll mount it back. I said, I'm coming to church. I came to church. I'm the one to do the transfer. I walk into church and sit down. Worship is going on. And I call one of the pastors here. I said, leave this place now. Go down to where they sell the cement. Go and buy cement. And go and buy the sand and buy the chippings. Once you get there, just communicate me on chat. I'll be sending the money to you so you can come. I said, because after service, you guys will finish the casting. So it will dry through the night and tomorrow they will mount it. No excuse. There are people who will say, mm, let's just leave it. Tomorrow money we do it. For me, it has to be done. God will not come from heaven and make me do it. Nobody will motivate me to do it. I will have to motivate myself. I give an example. A few hours ago, we're in the house. Someone was doing some work for me. And after he did, of course, I've been working since morning. Working tirelessly. So we got to a point, I asked him, this other part of this building, are you going to work on it this evening or tomorrow morning? He said, sir, better tomorrow morning. I said, why? He said, the materials may not be enough. I said, no, don't tell me that. I said, mix the one you have now. Let's see how far it goes. If it stops at half, then we know at least tomorrow the material has finished. Then we can start tomorrow with another one. Guess what, people of God? He said, okay, he started mixing it. When he started doing it, we found out that the material we had was more than the work we were doing. He finished the work and remained. I turned to him, I said, look at it now. What you were procrastinating to do for tomorrow. Tomorrow is another day. You should have time to do other things with your life. Tomorrow there are new opportunities to go for. Why using tomorrow to do what you can do today? And we gave attention to that. He finished it. I made sure I took care of everything. Like I started working in my place since morning. No time to even sit down and eat food. I gave it everything because nobody will make me do it. I don't need to feel good to do it. Is it important? I have to do it. You know, a lot of you live your life to emotions. You live your life to feeling. When you don't feel like doing it, you don't do it. Feeling and necessity are two different things. There's something called the love necessity. If it, is, if it is necessary, then it should be done. It doesn't matter whether I feel good about it or not. What is important is that there's something in my hand that I need to deliver. And I must give it, I must do it. There's no excuse whatsoever. If you understand this law of life, your life will be faster than where it is now. You want to know why anybody is doing well? I saw a video of Papa Kumuyi today. He was in Cameroon for a conference for a crusade. When he landed, I told somebody, I said, is this not Papa Kumuyi? Gray head, old, very old, deeper life Jew, very old. Do you know how many years the man has been in ministry? I said, at his age, why is he not resting? This man is still moving. These men are still conquering nations. Meanwhile, young people are retiring. These men should have been the ones retiring. Young people are the ones going into redundancy. These men are becoming more significant and relevant. It is not the devil that is keeping you where you are. It's your choice. It's your choice. For instance, those of you in the music industry, doing sin is not better than you. Nothing makes Messi Chiwo better. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing makes anybody play better than you. The reason they do better and you feel like this guy is a superstar is because he gives himself super training. <laughs> the worst abuse is self-abuse. The, the way you treat yourself is the worst thing you can be doing to yourself. Worst form of abuse. It's not drug abuse. It's self-abuse. That's why I never condole anything around me that looks like I'm depreciating myself. Never. I would rather not preach than to preach poorly. I would rather not dress than to dress poorly. I would rather eh, not play on the keyboard than to play poorly. Ah! I would rather not hold the mic to sing, than to sing poorly. 
Now we are not saying that there's no room for doing things poorly or failing. That's not what we are saying. What we are saying is that you shouldn't entertain room for keep for continuing doing things poorly. Because the part of a just is like a shining light. That means at this point you are shining dim. Tomorrow it should shine brighter. Next tomorrow it should increase brighter and brighter. Things should keep illuminating brighter in your life. Praise the Lord. Let me hear that hallelujah like a thunder. Glory to God. Is somebody hearing something right now? Is he entering? The biggest project to work on is you. Ayayakabataya. Biggest project to work on is you. Biggest investment to make is you. Biggest business to undertake is you. The business of being better. Of getting better. God, I wish I was favored by time this evening. I would have taken you on a journey. But permit me, let's get on this. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let me read from verse number 12. And then I will get down to verse number 14. Look at what verse number 12 said. Not that I have already obtained it. Or have already become perfect. But I press on. In order that I may lay hold of that. For which also I was laid hold of. By Christ Jesus. Paul said, it's not like I've become perfect. It's not like I've attained anything. But this is one thing that I continue to do. I continue to press on in order that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Now look at verse 13. Very interesting. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. This is a man who believes that life is a journey, not a destination. Hmm? <laughs> This is a man who believes that life is a journey and not a destination. Can I tell you something? Every morning I wake up, there's this excitement that envelops me. It's not the excitement of how much money I have in my account. No. It's the excitement that I know that there's a journey ahead of me. And that every day I wake up, I'm going towards something. I'm pressing towards something. I am not the blessed. I'm not the person I used to be. Every morning I wake up, I'm not the same. I know it. I'm not the same person. I don't think the same way. I don't see things the same way. I know that every day I wake up is another day to advance towards what is ahead of me. It's not a destination thing. It's a journey. So I wake up with the knowing. With that knowing. My friend, listen. Don't live your life to circumstances. Don't live your life to chance. Don't live your life to events. Take hold of your life. Take charge of your life. When they say the sky is your limit, you don't understand. It's not a motivational statement. It's the truth. In fact, for people like me, it's not a limit. It's a starting point. Le bega de be, le de be. A starting point. The best time to be alive is now that you are alive. <laughs> there couldn't have been a better time. Don't make this life miserable. By how you think and how you feel and how you, how you see life. I've taken a vow on everything God has put in me. Until they all get unleashed. I ain't gonna stop on the journey. I know there's more. There's more to me than make the eyes. Refuse to die a local champion. Ay, ay, ay. Refuse that you will die a local champion. You know, this environment you live in, for instance, when you live here for too long, you begin to assume that this is how everyone in the world is. No, sir. Tony and Lumelu was enlisted as one of the most 100 influential people on the earth. A man like you, he has empowered people with seed capital to start business around Africa to the tone of more than 100 million, 100 billion dollars. Not below. 100 billion dollars. One man. And yet he has two legs like you. Wear suits like you. Wear tie like you. Walk like you. Smile like you. What is the difference? This one knows there's more to him. I was looking at his pictures the other day. They did throwbacks 
because of his pictures. You needed to see him when he was looking very small. When he was very, very long captain with slippers. I said, the same man. What happened? Something called transition happened. This man knew there's more to me. See, your story is not very unique. This thing you are celebrating, God, you don't understand my story, Pastor. Somebody has had more worse situation. Somebody has gone through more storyline. Somebody has a more, more, more fierce, more fierce battle than you have ever had. And he came out of it and succeeded. Not because God helped him, but because the man decided. God doesn't help who is not ready. Four lepers would have been trapped at the gate of the city until they decided. Didn't God know they needed help? God can't do anything in a man's life until that man realizes that where he is is not good enough. That's when God steps in and says, I'm now ready to pack you up. Didn't God know that there were four lepers sitting down there? Why did God not show up? See, didn't God know that there was a man sitting at the pool of Bethsaida for 35 years? Not 35 days, 35 years. Didn't heaven know and one day Jesus came around and said, Oh God, will that be made whole? And the syndrome this man has been used to. I have no man. Jesus, you understand? I have no man. Jesus said, don't tell me about whether you have a man. The question is, will you be made whole? There are people who are too used to their problem. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.